Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at how Frank Lampard could set up Chelsea with Coral. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new and turn the notification bell on and hit that goddamn like button. Anyway, let's get this party started. Maurizio Sarri looks like his time at Chelsea is up. A run of poor results in 2019, losing the dressing room, culminated in a remarkable outburst from Sarri in the League Cup final. When goalkeeper Kepa Aspilicueta Ariza Balaga refused to be substituted for penalty-saving extraordinaire Willy Caballero. To make matters worse for Chelsea, they've just been handed a two-window transfer ban by FIFA for signing 29 international underage players. As we saw with Atletico Madrid, transfer bans can be delayed if the clubs choose to appeal, but there could be repercussions. If Chelsea decide not to appeal their ban, they won't be able to register any players in the summer transfer window. A new manager will have to build with what he's got. Which brings us to Frank Lampard. The former Chelsea midfielder is currently managing Derby County in the Championship. The Rams play some really, really good football, arguably above their station, and that's shown in the results. They struggle against physical sides, but are more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Premier League opposition, shown when they met Manchester United and Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. Lampard has taken experience from his playing days in his tactical setup. His derby sides blend two different styles of play. Excellent transitional play of Jose Mourinho's 2005 Chelsea side with inverted wingers that were so dangerous on the break and the side that knocked Lampard's Chelsea out of the Champions League in 2009, Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. Not necessarily in style of play, but the emphasis on two playmaking central midfielders and the collective attitude when it comes to offensive pressing. Derby line up in a 4-3-3 that looks more like an offensive 4-1-4-1. They build up between their centre-backs and defensive midfielder, using triangles and third-man runs to open up their opponents. Interestingly, Derby's full-backs are very reserved and play a support role, rather than getting into the final third and even less frequently hitting the byline. Instead, Lampard sees his team create through quick interplay between his front three and playmaking midfielders, before looking to get the forwards in behind the opposition's defence. Often balls are fired into the feet of the front three before they're laid off to a midfielder. The other midfielders often make a third man run to give an option to break the line or become a wide option in an advanced area. But when they don't have the ball is actually when they're at their most dangerous. Their front three work exceedingly hard and it's clear that they work on their pressing in training. They force their opponents to play centrally by the angle of their run and the position of their body, appearing to move wider than they actually do, which allows them to maintain the momentum. Their ability to control where their opponents plays allows them to set up pass lane pressing traps with incredible frequency. This is highlighted by their first goal versus West Brom. West Brom have the ball on the edge of their box and Derby cut off all their passing lanes except one, which is opened up by Jay Rodriguez dropping in to receive the ball. The ball is played out. Derby's Huddleston applies pressure from the back, forcing him to play a pass back to his goalkeeper. That passes under hit and Jack Marrett finishes smartly. Even when Derby have the ball, they often try to loft it in behind their opponent's defenders to get their forwards onto it. If the forward gets the ball, they're in a position to create, and if the defender the collects it then they press with Derby's front three. A little bit similar to how rugby union teams kick to get territory and then put pressure on their opponents high up the pitch. Offensively Lampard has a sound system and with better decision makers his side would score a lot more goals but that will come with experience. Defensively is where Lampard is lacking. By modelling his midfield on Barcelona's they are quite flimsy in the middle and often get caught out by direct teams or in the transition. Playing in a mobile Tom Huddleston in defensive midfield doesn't help out with the situation and a mobile ball winner would deal with the transitions more effectively. But how would he set up Chelsea? The major difference from Sarri's Chelsea would be a lack of a regista, pushing the point of playmaking higher up the pitch. This would push Angulo Kante deeper, but more on that later on. Kepa is a good keeper and you'd imagine that he would have learned his lesson from his disagreement with Sarri. Lampard's 4-1-4-1 sees the need for ball playing centre backs and defensively solid full backs, so Cesar Aspilicueta would be ideal at right back. Lampard's emphasis on giving youth a chance would see Chelsea youngster Reese James given opportunities at right back and could be the eventual success to Chelsea's captain. Emerson is the best traditional left back at Chelsea at the moment, so would get the nod ahead of Marcus Alonso. In central defence, David Luiz and Antonio Ruiz 
Rudiger would keep their places. Louise's long passing would be invaluable to Lampard, and Rudiger simply just gets Chelsea. Andreas Christensen's passing would give him opportunities as well, but could see him move to defensive midfield for the bigger games. Again, Welsh international Ethan Ampadu would be given minutes under Lampard. Moving into midfield, and it's news that all Chelsea fans have been crying for, and Gulo Kante is the perfect Lampard defensive midfielder. Kante's mobility and unrivaled tackling ability will allow him to cover Chelsea's attackers in the transition and would instantly remove Lampard's biggest weakness. In the future, you'd expect Mason Mount to excel in his derby role at Chelsea, but in the meantime, Ruben Loftus-Cheek could fill in as a roaming playmaker. I don't think Barkley has enough of a football brain to play this role, and Kovacic looks a shadow of the player that Real Madrid signed from Inter Milan. Harry Wilson made the advanced playmaker role his own at Derby, and we could see a similar move at Chelsea, moving a winger inside to become a playmaker. Callum Hudson-Odoi is a superb footballer and is an advanced playmaker by trade, comfortable at playing anywhere across the forward line, and playing a little bit deeper could give Chelsea some thrust in midfield missed since the days when Lampard played himself. It would also allow Hazard to retain his favoured left-wing position. Hazard would excel in Lampard's inverted winger system, and his teammates would be encouraged to link with the bell Belgium. William and Gonzalo Higuain will retain their positions in Lampard's Chelsea. Higuain would score more goals under Lampard but doesn't press aggressively enough, and William offers little in terms of attack. Pulisic would be perfect, but like Mount, he wouldn't link up with Chelsea until the end of the season. Tammy Abrahams could lead the line under Lampard, but it's unclear whether he's cut out for the Premier League. So maybe signing someone like Naby Fekir in a few years under Lampard could be perfect. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Would Lampard be a good fit for Chelsea? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new, like that goddamn video, and I'm out of here. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't heard already, we've partnered with Squawker and we'd really appreciate it if you could come over and support us by clicking their channel. And if you like what you're seeing, why not drop them a subscribe? Alternatively, if you've enjoyed this content, why not check out one of my recent videos?